What we're going to go over in this video is changing an equation into slope-intercept form. Not every equation you're given is going to be in slope-intercept form. So the instructions may ask you to change it into slope-intercept form, and we're going to go over that. We're also going to talk about the three other ways that you can write the equation of a line. Now the one that we've already gone over is slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form looks like this, where there are numbers for the m, which is the slope, and the b, the y-intercept. These two spots will have numbers in it. So an example of something that's in slope-intercept form would be y is equal to 2 thirds x plus 3. 2 thirds is your slope. The 3 here on the end is your y-intercept. These are the other two ways that you can write the equation of a line. You can write it in standard form. In the next video, we're going to go over that and how to write it in point slope form. So example number one, they're giving you an equation and you have to change this equation into slope intercept form. So what we would do is all our rules for solving an equation. In a sense, we're going to solve this equation for y. We want this equation right here to look like y is equal to the slope beside x and the y-intercept there on the end. So I need to use all my rules for solving an equation. One of my rules for solving an equation is I need to use a distributive property first. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to take this 2 and multiply it to each term inside there. y minus 10 is equal to 2 times x, 2x, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. So I'm trying to put this in slope-intercept form. I need to use my distributive property first if it has parentheses in it. I need to get this y by itself because it's supposed to be y is equal to. That means I need to get rid of this negative 10 right here. To get rid of something, you do the opposite. The opposite of negative 10 is positive 10. I need to add it to this side, and I'm going to add it to this right here. Add 10 to that side. y is equal to, that cancels out, 2x, and then negative 2 plus 10 is positive 8. So I need to see that this is in slope-intercept form. y is equal to, there's my slope in front of an x, and there's my y-intercept on the end. So to put these in slope-intercept form, I need to use my rules for solving an equation. Example number two. I need to make this equation look like y is equal to. That means the y needs to be by itself. I need to get rid of this 2x, just like up here where I got rid of the negative 10, opposite of negative 10 was positive 10. I need to get rid of this neg I need to get rid of this 2x right here. I'm going to do that by subtracting 2x from both sides. That's going to cancel out. I'm going to be left with 3y is equal to. These are not like terms. I can't combine these together. I need to put them though in the correct order. The correct order for slope-intercept form is the x needs to go first and the constant or the number needs to go on the end. So I'm going to write the negative 2x first and since that's a positive 12 I want to put plus 12 right there. This y is still not by itself. Now normally to solve something that looks like this I would need to divide because this is multiplying. I need to divide both sides by 3. So I'm going to divide this side by 3 and I'm going to divide everything over here by 3 to get this y by itself. These 3's cancel out. y is equal to, I can't take these and divide them, so it's going to be written as a fraction. Negative 2 thirds x. And then positive 12 divided by 3, positive 4. y is equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 4. This is in slope-intercept form, where it's got y is equal to the slope beside x and the y-intercept there on the end. Example number three. Sometimes example number three can give students problems, and here's where it gives students problems. Right here at the very beginning, everything's going to be the same. I need to get this y by itself, so I need to get rid of this x. So I'm going to take away x. So, so far, it's just like example number two. Those cancel out. y is equal to, I need to put this in the right order because I can't combine them together, negative x plus 16. So far, so good. The opposite of multiplying by 4 is dividing by 4, because I need this y completely by itself. 
and I need to divide each one of these over here by 4. The 4's cancel out. I've got y is equal to, and here's where some students have some difficulty. They forget that there is a 1 in front of this x. So just like up here, this is going to end up being a fraction where it's negative 1 divided by 4. I put the x beside it. I divide these numbers and get positive 4. So remember, there is a 1 sitting right there. So this is going to end up being a fraction just like this one. This is in slope-intercept form. y is equal to, there's my slope, negative 1 fourth. I write down the x, and then my y-intercept is down here on the end. Example number four. I need to put this in slope-intercept form. That means this y needs to be by itself. I need to get rid of everything over here and have just a y. The first thing I'm going to get rid of is this x right here. I'm going to take x away from both sides. I'm going to get negative 3y is equal to can't combine these together. These are not like terms. Negative x minus 9. I still need to get rid of this negative 3 right here. The opposite of multiplying by negative 3 is dividing by negative 3. Divide everything by negative 3. These negative 3's cancel out. y is equal to. Remember, a negative divided by a negative is a positive, and just like the previous one, there's a 1 sitting right there. 1 third x. 1 divided by 3 because a negative divided by negative is a positive. Same here. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. 9 divided by 3 is 3. This is now in slope-intercept form. Let's look at example 5. Example 5 is going to be different because not everything in this one is going to come out to be whole numbers. Like right here, we've got a whole number at the end of this. My y-intercept is a whole number. The y-intercept doesn't have to be a whole number. We're going to end up with a lot of fractions in this one. So let's start off like we did with this one up here. We're going to get this y by itself, and let's get rid of this 18x by subtracting 18x and I need to subtract 18x from both sides. I'm left with 11y is equal to negative 18x minus 17 because I can't combine those together. I need to get rid of this 11. I'm going to divide everything by 11. Those 11's cancel out. y is equal to, I can't divide these. This ends up being a fraction. Negative 18 elevenths x and this also cannot be divided. So this is going to end up being a fraction, minus 17 elevenths. My slope on this, negative 18 elevenths. My y-intercept, negative 17 elevenths. Example number six. I need to get this y completely by itself. So this is what I need to get rid of first. So remember, when you're solving a two-step equation, you need to add or subtract before you multiply or divide minus 19 from both sides. That's going to leave me with 6y is equal to. I can't combine these together. Remember, the slope with the x goes first and the y-intercept goes on the end. So I'm going to put the negative 19 there on the end. I need to get rid of that 6. Opposite of multiplying by 6 is dividing by 6. I want to divide everything by 6 y is equal to, I can't divide these, so it's going to end up being a fraction, 19 6 x minus, can't divide these, leave it as a fraction. Example number seven. Example number seven, remember, I need to put this in slope-intercept form. That means it needs to start off with y is equal to. All the other ones, the y was over here on this side, and that's the side it needs to be on. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to take everything over here and move it to that side of the equal sign. I'm going to take everything over here and move it to that side of the equal sign. And when I do that, it's going to look like this. 7y plus 19. That's taking that and putting it over here on this side. And I'm going to take the 19x and put it over here on the other side. Now the y is on the side it's supposed to be on. Now I'm going to start getting rid of numbers over here like this. Subtract 19 from both sides. 7y is equal to 19x, because the x needs to go next, 
minus 19. Now I need to get rid of the 7. The opposite of multiplying by 7 is dividing by 7. Divide that by 7 and that and that. y is equal to, because those 7's cancel out, 19 sevenths x minus 19 sevenths. That is in slope intercept form. Example number 8. I've got parentheses, so before I do anything, I need to use the distributive property. y minus 1 is equal to, I'm going to take that 1 tenth and multiply it to each one of those. 1 tenth times x is 1 tenth x. This is one of those where we're taking a fraction and a whole number. Negative 10 times 1 is negative 10 divided by 10 is negative 1. I need to get y by itself. The only thing I need to get rid of is this negative 1. Opposite of negative 1 is positive 1. And then I'm going to add it to this one over here as well. y is equal to, those cancel out, 1 tenth x. And then negative 1 plus 1 is 0. Remember, I don't write zeros on this. So this is now in slope-intercept form. This equation and this equation are exactly the same, except it's written in a different order. That's the only thing we're doing here, is putting these equations in the order I want them in, where it says y is equal to. Last two examples. Example 9. Everything is over here on this side. The first thing I'm going to get rid of is the constant, this number right here. So positive 15, the opposite of positive 15, is negative 15. I'm going to subtract 15 from both sides. 18x plus 14y is equal to 0 minus 15, negative 15. I need to get rid of this right here first, because I need to add or subtract before I multiply or divide. Negative 18x, negative 18x. Those cancel out. I have 14y is equal to negative 18x minus 15. That's the order it needs to be in. One more step here. I need to divide both sides by 14. That means divide everything by 14. These 14s cancel out. y is equal to. All fractions need to be put in lowest terms. And I can tell this is not in lowest terms because these are even numbers, and 2 will go into even numbers. So I want to divide both of those by 2. Negative 18 divided by 2 is negative 9, and 14 divided by 2 is 7. Make sure I put the x with it. These can't be divided, and it can't be reduced. So I put minus 15 fourteenths there on the end. This is now in slope-intercept form. One more example, example number 10. Again, this is not in the correct order. This right here needs to be over here on this side, and this right here needs to be over here on this side. So, negative 6y is equal to 7x plus 20. Now that I've switched it and got the y on the side I need it on, I need to do one more thing to get this y by itself. The opposite of multiplying by negative 6 is dividing by negative 6. I need to divide everything by negative 6. y is equal to 7 divided by negative 6. It's going to be a fraction. Negative 7, 6. Make sure I put the x with it. A positive divided by a negative is a negative. And again, this needs to be reduced. 2 will go into both of these. 20 divided by 2 is 10, 6 divided by 2 is 3. This is now in slope-intercept form. It's in the right order where it says y is equal to. I've got my slope right here, and I've got my y-intercept right here.